Hi, my friends. I'm back again today. Thank God it's another Sunday. I'm always excited and delighted to be here. I hope you are excited to see me on your screens, in your laptop or phone screen or even TV screen. I hope you're excited to see me. Yes, it's good to be together. David said, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. So at every opportunity to fellowship together with the brethren is something to be excited about. Whether we're meeting physically or not in the spirits, there is no distance. So welcome to another Sunday. It's good to have you here. Thank you for not leaving me all by myself. Okay, so yes, you're welcome. And I'm happy to see you. All right, so we're going to take another Bible lesson today, an entirely different topic from what we learned last week, Sunday. But it's some, um, in a way, a continuation of what happened after the Holy Spirit descended on the apostles, after the apostles were baptized by the Holy Spirit. I hope you still remember last Sunday's lesson. Okay. So before we go right into that, um, let's take a word of prayer. Okay. Our Heavenly Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise because you are deserving of everything. Let your name be praised. Here we are again. We're thanking you for this opportunity. And we're inviting you, Holy Spirit, to come and be in our midst. Come and teach us. Come and help us learn from you. Use me as a mouthpiece. And as you speak through me, let our ears and our hearts be open to hear and receive your word. And let what we learn today cause a change in our lifestyles. Let's find a way to apply what we learn today so that we can grow and be better. Thank you, Father, for loving us unconditionally. We declare that we love you too. Take all the glory. Have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. By the way, my friends, I hope you had a great week last week. I did. My week was fantastic. All right. So before we start the message proper, we are going to go for a praise and worship session. You know how we do it. We go sing, dance, and glorify God. Let the devil know that we have a living God and we are excited to worship and give him thanks. So we'll go do that. And then when we come back, we'll start our lesson for today. I hope you have your dancing shoes on and you're ready to clap your hands and you're ready to shake your body. Now let's go and I'll see you after the praise and worship session. Who's happy to be in the presence of the Lord? Come on, shout hallelujah! Hallelujah! I think I'm going to lie today to be able to see this beautiful day God has made. Somebody shout hallelujah!
Hey, my friends, welcome back. I trust that you totally enjoyed that praise and worship session. May all glory forever and ever and ever be unto our God in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so like I said before we went for that, we're going to go straight into our lesson for today. What is our Bible lesson topic for today? The first church. Yes. Once upon a time, there was no church like we used to have, like we have it today. It did not exist. Everything that exists now has an origin, started from somewhere. So the fact that we have churches today is started from somewhere. And our lesson today is going to be based on how the first church started. Okay, and this event was after the Pentecost. What is the Pentecost, you ask? When the Holy Spirit descended on the disciples. Remember what we studied last week? Yes, that whole event is called the Pentecost. And where did that happen? In Jerusalem. That's where that happened. So we see that after they were baptized by the Holy Spirit, Remember we said Peter got up to speak to people and from speaking to people, people gave their lives to Christ and boom, that's how more people were added to the disciples and the church of Jesus Christ began. Okay, so let's go to our text for today's lesson. Our text is from the book of Acts chapter 2. Yes, the same Acts chapter 2 we read last Sunday, but we're taking today's lesson from Verse, 20, verse 42 to 47. So that's if you read your Bible, open to Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. Okay, and I am going to read Acts chapter 2, verse 42. I'm starting to read. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. Very important. I like how this verse started. I'm going to say it again. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all. And the apostles performed many miracles, signs, and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper. They worshipped together at the temples, and each day they met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. All the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. So this is chronicling the event that happened after the Pentecost after the Holy Spirit descended on the disciples. You can read the whole of Acts chapter 2. It's, it's, it's a very interesting read. But for today's lesson, we're just focusing on 42 to 47 of Acts chapter 2. And he started by saying, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. You can see that after what happened to them, they didn't disperse to their various homes. No. But they continued. They, they now saw themselves as family. They saw themselves as people with the same purpose, with the same goal, people with the same calling. Remember the Great Commission. They saw themselves as people, you know, that had the same goal, the same objective. So they remained together, devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals and to prayer. That's how to grow. You cannot be an island. Nobody 
is an island. No believer is an island. It's not enough to say, okay, I'm born again. I've given my life to Christ. Beautiful. But we must continue learning just as we're doing today. Coming together to fellowship and learning from the teachings in the Bible. And then they shared what they had with one another. They even continued in the Last Supper, doing, you know, sharing the Last Supper. And also in prayer, someone may be wondering, oh, um, but what is the Last Supper? The Last Supper was a meal Jesus had with his disciples before he was crucified, before he was arrested and then further crucified. And in, in that um, event, when he had that meal with them, he said he wasn't going to have it again with them until later but that they were going to continue in this tradition to have this meal together and that each time they did they should remember what he did for them and that's what today believers christians all over the world we call the holy communion so whenever you're taking the holy communion you're partaking of the last supper okay so here the believers continued having the last supper in fellowship in prayers and living you know doing things together the bible says they shared what they had it says they sold their possession they sold their property and shared the money with those in need they shared with those in need they were generous to one another generosity giving sharing to those in need is a hallmark of christianity is a pointer that you're truly a child of your father, the, of your heavenly father. Because the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave. And if you love like God loves as his child, then you'll be prompted every time, every now and then to give. When you see people in need, you will not be a stingy person. God does not want you to be a stingy person as a child of God. You have to be like your heavenly father. Okay? So having taken this um, brief introduction, let's go straight to the key learning points from this lesson. Okay? The apostles were in Jerusalem. Remember I said that was where the Pentecost happened. That was where they got the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And boom, they received the boldness, the courage to start preaching. And souls were added to them. People got converted as a result of the preaching, as a result of the, the testimonies they were sharing, of their encounter, of their relationship, of their time with Jesus Christ and how he had come to save the world and all of that. People were added to them. People believed in Jesus as a result of their preaching and they were added to them. So the apostles remained in Jerusalem, okay? And they devoted themselves to teaching and fellowshipping and sharing meals. You cannot not read your Bible as a believer. You cannot not have fellowship with other believers. The Bible says we should not forsake together, we should not forsake the gathering together. Fellowshipping or brethren is in the Bible. And you can see it here from this scripture that we read. They fellowshiped together with one another. They listened to preachings. The disciples were preaching and they were listening. They continued in prayer to grow in your relationship with your Heavenly Father. You need to cultivate a habit of prayer. It's not enough to talk to... Do you talk to your mom once in a month? You speak to your dad only once a week. I bet you do not. Because if you did, I'm sure your mom will call you or your dad will call you to say, Is everything okay? Nobody does that to their parents. So why would you want to do that to God? God loves us. God wants to be in a relationship with us. And you cannot but communicate when you're in friendship with someone, okay? And it helps you to grow. It helps to build the bond of that friendship to be closer and tighter. Imagine if you have a friend that you suppose is your best friend, but there is no communication. You guys don't make time to talk and spend time with each other. You don't play together. You don't do things together. That means that, that friendship 
would not be so nice, right? The same way in our friendship with, with our Heavenly Father, in our relationship with our Heavenly Father, as believers, as Christians, as children of God, we need to continue learning from the scriptures. We need to continue fellowshipping together with other brothers. So every opportunity you have to go to church, please go to church, okay? And then continue in prayer. Take it seriously and speak with him. And also make time to listen and ask him to speak to you, okay? So our second, um, our third learning point from this lesson is miracles and growth. From what um, the passage we read, we can see that the apostles, the disciples of Jesus Christ, they performed miracles as a result of the power of the Holy Spirit that was working in them. Remember when Jesus was giving them the Great Commission. He told them, anyone that believes will perform miracles. Signs and wonders will follow anyone that believes. That's miracles. And we can see the disciples here in this passage in, in Acts chapter 2, we can see the disciples living out this reality. They were performing numerous signs and wonders. And I'm sure that was part of what urged people and made them to believe more in Jesus Christ and give their lives to Jesus. You and I too can perform miracles. Remember, like I said, we're not the ones doing it. We're just making ourselves available and the Holy Spirit is working through us to perform those miracles. When we pray in faith for the sick, the sick will, will get healed, okay? So we see that happen in this scripture that we read. Another learning point is sharing and worship. We saw that the disciples, they spent time worshiping together in fellowship. And the Bible also says that they sold their possessions, they sold their property, and they used that to bless those who are in need and that's how the church grew that's part of how the church grew because if you feel that someone cares for you if you know that someone if you know that if you come to this place you feel loved and cared for i'm sure you want to go there nobody wants to go to where they don't feel loved or cared for right would you want to i bet you wouldn't so the same way people noticed that these disciples they were showing love and care and they would come and by coming they heard the word of god they believed and they were added to the number of believers so that's how the church began to grow that's how the church began to um be established remember the passage said that they had fellowships in their homes today we call it house fellowship yes so the concept of, of house fellowship did not start with our church. It started with the early church, with the first church. They had fellowships in their homes where they would break bread and have worship together. Okay? So I hope that you're part of a house fellowship session. I hope you're part of a, a, a house um, fellowship wherever you are. It may be a virtual house fellowship. It may be a live um, house fellowship where you go to physically. But you have to make yourself a part of the body of Christ. It is very important. Remember, that was part of how the disciples grew. And if it was good enough for the disciples, I'm sure it's good enough for you and I today. Okay? Now, um, another point, which I already mentioned in passing. Daily, God added to them because they were doing what God wanted them to do. Remember the commission the Great Commission, told them to preach, to baptize those who, who believe, and that they will perform miracles. So because they were obeying these things through the power of the Holy Spirit, God added to them. There is always a reward when we obey God. There is a blessing in obeying God. Are you an obedient person? Or are you someone who likes to just Go your own way, do what you want to do. That's not how God wants you to live. God wants you to be obedient first to God, to the word of God, and to the people of authority that he has kept around you. Maybe your parents, maybe your teachers at school, your uncles or aunties, as long as they are teaching you or pointing you in the right direction. 
God wants you to be obedient. When you're obedient, God blesses you. When you're not an unnecessarily stubborn child who just wants to always do what they want, God blesses you. Now, um, the final learning point we're going to take, even though um, it is not particularly in the text where we read between verse 42 and 47 of Acts chapter 2, but if you read further down, it talks about how that Peter and John performed an extraordinary miracle at the temple. You know, remember we said that the passage read told us that they would go to the temple every day and then go back home to fellowship and break bread. So one of those days when they were going to the temple, they went to the temple, they saw a man who had been crippled, lame from birth. And it was awesome because they spoke to that man in the name of Jesus and he stood up and walked for the first time ever in his life. That is what the power of God can do through us. The power of God has not stopped working. It was not only for Peter and John and all the other disciples. It's still available for us today if we can give ourselves over and have faith that we can do miracles, that God can do miracles through us. So my friends, those are our learning points from this passage of the scripture that we've read and from our Bible lesson today. Remember, our title is The First Church looking at how the first church started and how did it start first the holy spirit came upon the disciples on the pentecost on the day of pentecost in jerusalem and after that they were emboldened and they went about preaching telling everyone that kept to listen about jesus christ of course accompanied by you know the gift of speaking in other tongues and they continued in prayer they continued in fellowshipping together with one another. They continued in breaking bread, the communion, taking the Holy Communion. They continued in learning the scriptures or, you know, learning from the um, teachings of the um, disciples. And with that, they grew. God added to them. And that was how the first church was birthed. That was how the first church came to be in existence. I'm sure you're part of um, um, the family of the Daystar Christian Center. Or perhaps you're part of another um, church family. But whichever, just know that it didn't start with us. The church began some time ago with the disciples of Jesus Christ. But the same way the church grew by doing certain things, that's how you and I can grow by doing those things. And those things, like I said before, praying, continuing in prayer, fellowshipping together with one another, just as we're doing now, learning from the Bible, you know, um, being generous, being open-handed, sharing what we have with those in need. And I must say, if we need to take permission from our parents to share, please do get the required permission from your parents. But God does not expect you to be stingy. God does not want you to be a selfish or self-centered person. Okay? So I hope that we've been able to learn something from today's lesson. I hope that it's blessed your heart. I hope that um, you've seen one or two things that you can apply to your own life to um, grow and be better. God bless you. Thank you for spending the time with us today. But before we call it a wrap, before we go for today, I would like to ask, I don't know if you're listening to me and you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord and Master and Savior of your life. It's an opportunity for you to do that today. You cannot be a part of the body of Christ if you're not a believer, if you're not born again. So would you please close your eyes, put your heart on your heart and say this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for loving me unconditionally. I thank you for giving Jesus Christ, your only begotten son, to die for me. Today, I believe in everything that he did for me. That through the shedding of his blood, my sins were washed away and forgiven forever. I accept forgiveness of my sins. And I'm asking you, Heavenly Father, to come 
and make your home in me. I give you my life. Holy Spirit, come and dwell in me. And like he used the disciples, like he used the apostles of old, use me and help me to continue to grow in my relationship with you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. My friend, if you said that prayer, you have given your life to Christ. And it's good to have you as part of the family of God. Welcome. God is excited to call you his child. And I hope that you're excited to do that too. So, to wrap up now, we're going to take our memory verse from John chapter 14, verse 16. Are you there? Open your Bibles. Let's go there. And it says, Then I will ask the Father to send you the Holy Spirit who will help you and always be with you. John chapter 14, verse 16. Then I will ask the Father to send you the Holy Spirit who will help you and always, always be with you. The Holy Spirit wants to be with you the same way he was with the disciples and help them to do great things. I hope that you would allow yourself to be used by the Holy Spirit today. Thank you so much for being here today with me. I hope you enjoyed yourself just like I did. And I pray that what we've learned today will find ways to apply it in our lives. All right, my friends, you take care. Have a great week. Have a um, wonderful time at school. And remember, God is counting on you to tell the world about him. All right, he will see you again. Bye for now. Spirit